Hey yo, what's good? Listen, before we even start this video, before we even start this video, real quick disclaimer, real quick disclaimer, let's just get this out the way right now. Check this, right? If you're the type of person that orders Chinese food, say you make your uh, your, your Chinese food order and then you ask them how long it's going to be for your order, like you don't already know it's going to be 10 minutes, this video is probably not for you. I mean, like literally, I don't care if you order an egg roll, they're going to say 10 minutes. I don't care if you order a meal for 30 different people, they're going to say 10 minutes. You know what's going to happen when you get there in 10 minutes? It's actually going to be ready. But if you ask how long it's going to take for your meal and you know it's going to be 10 minutes, this video is probably not for you. And while we on the subject of Chinese food, listen, if you're the type of person that goes to a Chinese buffet, and yeah, I go to Chinese buffet too, especially they be having all little different meals, little hibachi and all that too. But listen, if you go to a Chinese buffet and you eat any seafood from a Chinese buffet, this video is probably, not, life is not for you, but this video is not for you. I'm talking about any seafood from a Chinese buffet, this video is not for you. And last but not least, if you're the type of person that comes on my channel all the time, watch these videos, listen to the intros and all that, and you're not subscribed to the channel, this video is probably not, you know what, no, no, I still want you to watch the video. But listen, I need y'all to do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button right on the bottom of this video. We're almost at our goal of 50,000 subscribers. 50, subscribers. You know that's been my goal. So I just need y'all to do me that favor. If you laugh, if you like this video, or if you just want to just be a player about it, and hit that subscribe button for me. I appreciate that. But listen, all these disclaimers had absolutely nothing to do with this video, but let's get started. DJ Ben Ben Bandana. Hey, yo, what's good? It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected, Mr. Hashtag I Am Buffalo. And I know a lot of people was in the comments saying, like, yo, you talk mad fast, you gotta slow down. Unfortunately, like, I've been telling you guys a long time that I'm not one of these people who just hopped on YouTube and put a DJ in front of my name. I actually come from radio, um, from, from DJing on radio, radio DJ in real life. And on radio, we gotta talk quick, because in between songs, I gotta do three shout outs, give two giveaways ways and say the number all within like 10 seconds so I talk kind of fast I've been trying to slow it down because I've been seeing a lot of comments and I appreciate the feedback so yeah I do talk kind of fast and when I go back and listen to the video sometimes I'll be like yo I was talking kind of fast but I don't know just come naturally I'm gonna start trying to talk a little slower <laughs> but anyways listen we got to talk about this Kodak Black situation um Kodak Black basically just wrote a statement you know what? let me choose my words uh wisely Kodak Black didn't write well technically that would be a statement I don't know I need to hear from y'all he basically he wrote a statement um, I know you guys was um, listening in the news uh, a while ago. They were saying how like Kodak Black was locked up. And he had got into it with like an inmate, got into it with one of the COs, and he like grabbed him and it did a bunch of old just wild stuff. And they were just like, "Yo, why he keep wilding out? Like he already facing like a little bit of time. Why he keep wilding out while he was in there?" Um, well, Kodak Black just told the story and basically wrote a statement on what actually happened. And when I say statement, he actually wrote a post, but. I need y'all feedback and let me know, does this count as a statement? Like, in the streets, in the streets, y'all y'all from gang, gang, squad, squad. Um, does this count as actually snitching or telling? Like, if you tell on the police, does this count as telling? Like, I don't know. In my book, I don't know. I think if you advocate so much of... We against the uh, we against the police and you can't talk you can't do all of this stuff. we're gonna talk about it but anyways listen Kodak Black wrote the statement this is what he said he, it's kind of long but I'm gonna try to speed it up um, Kodak Black wrote on his Instagram he put on October 29th I was laced with an unknown substance here in Miami FDC we gon we gon we gon we gon uh, we gon we're going to go back on that part, too, as far as I'm saying he was laced. Like, I don't understand. Well, we're going to talk about that. But anyways, he put, that substance gave me an out-of-body experience and had me feeling like I was possessed and dying slowly. Upon this experience, I managed to go to the CO's office to seek medical uh, attention as shown on surveillance cameras. I was denied. This left me in a state of paranoia. Shortly after I got into an altercation with the inmate, the same CO who denied me medical attention proceeded to pepper spray me, which instantly impaired my vision, and I was oblivious to who was. I was oblivious. <laughs> it was. Oh, hold on. It says was oblivious to who was punching and grabbing me repeatedly in the face. Even after I was on the floor, they continued to strike me and deploy more people. I don't even know if Kodak wrote it because he put deploy. He used some big words. I don't know. Maybe he was studying the books and stuff in there. No shots. I'm just saying. Just judging by the way he talks and he raps, he uses some some questionable words. But um, he put, I was summon, summoning for them to stop while gasping for my breath. Yeah, he ain't write this. This near-death experience felt like dogs were tearing at my skin while they were grabbing and beating me while I was under the influence of this unknown substance that mysteriously hasn't popped up in my urine analyst and mysteriously the inmate I was fighting with went home the next day. I was beaten so brutally that I had to be taken to the box in a wheelchair. I have been here for 45 days without commissary hygiene, stressed out and on psych meds, having the mourner loss of my brother Juice World behind the doors. Um, rest in peace, Juice World. Prior to this, there were a few inmates who intentionally beat up 
inmates who intentionally beat up an officer and no charges were filed. Meanwhile, I get into a fight with another inmate, and this officer jumps into a con jumps in to inflict harm on himself and capitalize on my status as a local celebrity. I had officers tell me that the CO was okay that night and that he is trying to go this route because of self checked himself into the hospital. I have also heard officers tell me that the CO has been back to FDC and bragging that he will hear a quarter million, maybe he did write this, quarter million from me. I want to shed this light on police brutality and the taxes they use to cover their behinds. I don't think Kodak Black wrote this. I think he maybe talked to somebody's lawyer or something like that, and then they put this out. But technically, is this telling? Like, and, and we got to talk about a little bit more because there's a deeper issue that I have with this. But first of all, is this telling? Like, for him, first of all, to say, like, yeah, they did this to me, but the other inmates was doing this, and nothing happened to them. Like, that's kind of like, I don't know. But the first sentence of this kind of bothered me because he put, basically, this whole incident, he's basically uh, saying that it was because he was laced. Now, it says, on October 29th, I was laced with an unknown substance here in Miami, FDC. Now, I'm not a law enforcement, I'm not a cop, I'm not any of that type of stuff, but if I was, say, law enforcement and I was reading the statement that he just wrote, I would have a couple questions, like, well, who laced what, and where did you get it from? Because you're saying, I was laced, like, how, somebody just forcefully went up to you and said, here, smoke this, somebody forcefully went up to you and said, here, swallow these pills, and it was laced. Now, realistically, he probably was trying to smoke some weed or something like that, it might have been like K2, some flock or something like that, I don't know, maybe he really did get laced, but you're in lockup committing more crimes but that's contraband you're not supposed to have that anyways so you can't really blame that on the basis of everything that happened to you now with kodak black the reason why i don't i'm not gonna say I have any sympathy for kodak black but he had i'm just gonna be real with you on this channel this might not be the popular opinion a lot of you guys those people would just be like yo free kodak free my man free my man even if he's guilty this this channel this video this channel is not for you this is for the realest people want to see change in life now kodak black Young poor kid from the ghetto, from the projects, Project Baby and all that. Finally makes it out. Makes millions and millions of dollars. Now he's young. He gets into a little bit of trouble. New to the money and all that. Little slap on the wrist. Then he does a video on live with kids and hammers and ratchets. Little slap on the wrist. Then he catches his case with the, the female and all that stuff like that. I'm not going to say slap on the wrist because he hasn't actually like finish that situation and then the thing when he was coming right over here i'm in buffalo new york he was coming across the border from like niagara falls canada something like that got caught with some ratchets and it was a whole another case and then the thing with nipsey uh with nipsey hustle when he was basically disrespecting nipsey hustle and ti and a lot of the older people who went through the same thing who came up in the streets trying to give you some advice trying to tell you like bro this ain't the way and what did kodak black say man you can't tell me nothing expeditiously like you can't tell me nothing project baby i don't know why you're gonna talk to talk to me when you know i ain't gonna listen well you didn't listen, and now you locked up, and now you're mad because people are not listening to you. People are not feeling bad because you got laced with illegal contraband. And I don't know how it happened. Like I said, maybe his water was laced. I don't know. Maybe he went to the water fountain and the water fountain was laced. Highly unlikely, but we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I want to know from y'all, how do y'all feel about this Kodak Black situation? Um, Honestly, I just want to say this. I don't wish jail or prison on anybody. If you do something and you wind up being guilty and you get locked up, that's on you. I pray that you have a fair situation and all that. And realistically, is pro it, does police brutality and CO brutality happen in prison? Yes. Does, does people of color get treated unfairly sometimes? Yes. But do idiots who go to jail, who shouldn't be in jail, who had a chance to get out of jail, go in jail and actually do things that could possibly provoke this happening to you more often? Absolutely yes. Like, if you would have just went in there, stayed cool, served your time, everything like that, might have been okay. I mean, you're a celebrity and you said a bunch of crazy stuff, so might not have been totally okay, but it been better than what's happening right now. You wouldn't be beat sitting in the box. Now, again, I'm not saying that I wish that this happened to him. I pray that he it makes a full recovery. I pray that if they did do something um, wrong to him, that justice is served. Even if it's, I mean, for, for Kodak Black, I honestly do feel that way. But just being a, a grown man, not a real end, but actual grown man who's actually come up in the streets and went through certain things and wish I had an opportunity one of the opportunities that Kodak Black had for him to do that and kind of mess that up and then now saying, oh, well, I want to bring light to this. I want I want help. I want people to really look at this and kind of help me out. When prior to you actually being in the situation when people was trying to help you out, when people was telling you, like, yo, you wilding out, you was like, yo, you can't tell me nothing. Why are you going to talk to me if you know I don't listen? Well, you don't want to listen. So what if we said the same thing? What if your lawyer and the judge and like that said, well, we don't want to listen. You just sit in there and do whatever you want to do. 
man, I don't know. But um, I want to hear from y'all, Bandana fam. Hop in the comments and let me know. Also, too, I don't want to sound like one of the people who's like begging for stuff. But honestly, one of my goals was to hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel. So if you could just do me that favor, hit that subscribe button for me. We only got need about 200 uh, more subscribers to hit that 50,000 subscriber mark. Definitely appreciate you guys. Another thing real quick I want to talk about, too. Um, shout out to this light is like mad bright. I'm like sweating. Hopefully my forehead ain't shiny. It probably is. But I don't care. Um, shout out to Queen's Flip, too. I was watching... Uh, Queens Flip, shout out to the whole platform. I love the content that's over there. Uh, Queens Flip was on live earlier today. Um, if you came here for the Kodak Black story only, you might want to click off the video right now. This is just for the bandana fam or the people who really care about what I'm actually talking about. But um, yeah, I was watching a, a live that uh, Queens Flip did earlier, and um, I had commented what about that. He had shouted me out. He was basically saying that he was waiting to see um, if I had any input or if I was going to talk about the whole uh, Malcolm X uh, situation, Malcolm X debate, that whole little thing like that too. Um, definitely appreciate the shout out. Um, I definitely was aware and I seen the whole Malcolm X thing but honestly on this platform as far as what I do the reason why I'm able to keep enjoying what I'm doing because I only talk about subjects that interest me or that I feel I can give some type of insight to or give some type of a resolution or add something positive to it and even if it's not something positive add something to the conversation honestly I don't know much and y'all probably gonna judge me for this a lot of people think I'm Muslim from Philly because I got a beard but no I'm from the east side of Buffalo and I actually was raised as a Christian but um I don't really know much about Malcolm X besides watching The Godfather of Harlem and I didn't even watch the full Malcolm X movie and listening to a couple um, Hassan Campbell videos and stuff like that too. Um, yes, I did watch a couple of his videos. He, like I say, sometimes he has some dope content. Sometimes we ain't gonna get into that. But yeah, besides the stuff that he was talking about Malcolm X, honestly, I'm just I'm uninformed. I don't know really anything about Malcolm X besides The Godfather of Harlem or the watching some of the movie of Malcolm X. And it wasn't something that really like interests me. But watching Queens Flip and everybody else talk about it and the different debates and King Ernest like that too, it kind of made me want to get some more information on it. So I don't know, maybe. For Further down the line, I'll have an opinion on it, but when it comes to certain topics, I just don't, I wouldn't have much to say about the Malcolm X situation. I don't know whether he bombed his own house. I don't know whether the government did that or whether it was the nation or, and I don't even know what the, the difference between Muslim and Muslim and I don't know any of that. But basically that's my answer to that uh, Queen Split, but shout out to Queen Split. But that's the reason why I didn't talk about the uh, Malcolm X situation, because honestly, I don't know. Um, personally, it really doesn't interest me because it's a whole total different religion than what I actually believe in. Even though some of the stuff they do believe in and some of the standards they do hold, I do respect. I do like that about, um, I don't want to, um, uh, offend anybody. I don't know whether it's Muslim or Muslim. I know somebody said it's different like that. Well, whatever he was, I don't want to offend any of those people. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. That's that's my, that's my take on the whole uh, Malcolm X situation. I, I am going to be looking forward to the debate. I wish I actually could be there uh, for the debate to watch that live. I think I can get like a lot of information uh, from that. Like, I've never been in New York City before. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe if they have like an open area like that and they sell tickets, then maybe I, I will take that trip out there and check that out. Um, but, yeah, I don't want to talk your head off. I'm about to head up out of here. Listen, also, too, right? If you're watching this video, uh, what time is it now? It is... It's actually 7.18 p.m. when I'm recording this video. It's probably not going to go up to about 8 or 9 p.m. But if you watch this video before 11 p.m. and you on Xbox uh, Live, add me at DJ Bandana Black. I will be on Call of Duty, you know what I'm saying, doing what I do. Anyways, DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected. Mr. Hashtag I Am Buffalo. And always remember, life is what you make it, so make it. DJ Bandana Black, I'm out. DJ Ban Ban Bandana!